everyone and welcome to yet another apartment building video. So today I'm making a very cramped family apartment. Uh, it's just a small two bedroom apartment that could fit up to a family of four. And I am making this in the apartment that was originally Penny Pizzazz's, which is pretty spacious as a studio, but when you try to turn it into a two bedroom apartment, it gets to be pretty cramped. And this is for one of my Let's Plays. It's for my Sims 4 Season 2 Let's Play, which is currently on hold because it's going through a transition period where I'm going to be following all the second generation Sims who are now young adults and I'm going to be moving out of their parents' house and on their own. So I just need to take a break to work on some builds for it and to give them all makeovers as they transition on with their life. So this is one of four apartments that I'm going to be making for that since there will be four households. And I did decide that I'm going to be making apartments for all of them because for whatever reason I just really love the idea of having them all move to the city. Plus I really love making apartments because my favorite part of building is doing the interior and when you're making apartments you're just doing the interior so I was really excited about the idea of making a bunch of apartments for them so I'll be sharing all of the apartments that I am going to be making and this one is for Judith and her, a sin named Judith and her twin sons Jackson Phoenix. I wouldn't say she's a single mom because while her and the father of her kids aren't together anymore, he is still a huge part of their life and in the Let's Play we'll be having the twins trade off between staying with her and staying with him. So when we go to work on the apartment for him, there'll be a room for them in that one as well. Uh, but we're just working on the living area right now, um, finished the kitchen already, which uh, it's kind of a weird cramped layout because right as you walk through the entrance area, you're just right, you know, you just kind of bump into a bar stool. But uh, yeah, that's just because I really like the idea of having the dining area just be seats at the counter. And I did test it and it does work. Sims can get through that, so no worries there. And when making this apartment, my thoughts behind why she, you know, why she's living in this super cramped apartment with the twins is that she really wanted to move to a nice part of the city for them so they could get into good schools and all of that stuff. So she took the, you know, the par cheapest apartment that, or, you know, she took, um, the most affordable apartment there was for her in the fashion district, which unfortunately was this really small one because I like to imagine that it's a little bit more expensive to live in the fashion district than it is to live in the spice district, which I think it actually is because I think the rents are higher in the fashion district. I could be wrong on that. So um, in this apartment, the furnishing is kind of a mix of I, what I saw is her trying to make the place look really, really nice, but then because she has twin boys in this cramped area, their toys and stuff are all over the place and are kind of messing with that a little bit. So you just got this mix of nice furniture and then kid stuff all over the place. Uh, and part of the reason, because part of the reason why I did make it so that their dining area is just going to be the counter, you know, the bar stools at the counter is that I imagine that the area behind the couch was actually meant to be the dining room, but there wasn't enough room in the twins' room to have all their toys in it. So it's just kind of a play area instead of a dining room. And to go with what I was saying earlier about her picking this apartment because she wanted her kids to go to a good school, I'm gonna give this lot the good school trait for when I actually go into the Let's Play. And I think there was another lot trait that helped out kids. I can't remember what it was called, but I think it made it so they learned skills faster or something like that. So I think I'm gonna give it that one as well. Uh, and as far as when this Let's Play is gonna be coming back, my original plan was to bring it back when my Montoya family Let's Play ends, which will be in I think four weeks or so because it's got about four parts left. But then they announced the new Vampires game pack. So what I think I'm gonna do instead is start a Let's Play related to that when the Montoya family one ends. And then I'll bring back this Let's Play when my penthouse Let's Build is over, which hopefully won't be too much of a wait after that because I think it'll be on part eight or nine at that point. So yeah, I don't think it'll have too many more parts to go after that. So yeah, it won't be that much more of an extra wait, but. Yeah, I was just really excited about doing about the idea of doing a vampire related let's play because none of the, you know, this let's play and the city living one I have going on, I don't think would really work well with the vampire thing. Like I just don't think it would work well to try to force some sort of vampire plot into them. But I still really wanted to explore the game pack, so I think the best thing to do is to just make a different let's play for that. I'm still not 100% sure about that because if I do that, I want to have something that I'm really excited about. At this point, I don't have an idea that I'm super excited about, but I will be starting that a month from now if I do end up doing it. So I'm sure I'll come up with, with something between now and then. But yeah, I'm thinking that's what I'm gonna end up doing and I'm not sure if I'm gonna just have some sort of storytelling type Let's Play or if I'm gonna maybe try, you know, maybe take a challenge from The Sims 3 that was related to vampires and adapt it to The Sims 4. I'm not sure about that one though because I've never really done a challenge Let's Play and I'm kind of unsure about that because I like to just be able to do my own thing with Let's Plays and when you're doing a challenge Let's Play it's a little bit more difficult to do that but if I find something that I really like I might end up doing that 
Uh, but more likely what I'll probably end up doing is just making some kind of family and having some background story for them and I'll just follow that. And it would be more of a mini let's play, probably 10 to 15 parts, maybe 20 max. It's not going to be 40 to 45 parts like my expansion pack let's plays have been. Just because it's a game pack and there's not really, you know, nearly as much to explore, so it's not going to be necessary for it to be that long. But I am pretty excited about it. I'm not sure how I feel about them doing game packs solely devoted to Supernaturals, though. Uh, I, I like I don't know how I'm gonna how I feel about it if they continue to do that because I mean if you're gonna make like three different game packs about Supernaturals, why not just you know why not just do an expansion pack about them? And I mean I guess part of it's because they want to maybe flesh out each of those occults more. But I mean you could still go into a lot of detail with them in an expansion pack. Um, so yeah, we'll. I don't know if it's going to be something they continue to do, though. I mean, maybe they'll just have the vampires as a standalone thing and then maybe have an expansion pack later on with a bunch more supernaturals. I'm not sure, but I'm definitely looking forward to learning more about it and learning more about the world. It is a small world, but it is cool that they're going to be including a more, you know, resident another residential world with it. And I'm not too upset that it's, I think it's only five lots. Uh, but I'm not really too upset about it because the past game packs didn't come with the world. Well, Outdoor Retreat did, but the past two didn't, so yeah, I mean, it's not really a huge deal that it's a smaller world. And I'm hoping that because they have this whole game pack devoted to just vampires, that they'll be a lot more detailed than they have been in the past. Like, wouldn't be kind of disappointed if they aren't? Like, it'd be cool if you could have good or bad vampires, because I think in, in Sims 2, maybe? I didn't play with witches in The Sims 2, but I think you could have them be good or bad witches, and I think maybe in The Sims 3 also, so it'd be really cool if they had something like that for The Sims 4 as well. And it'd be kind of cool if you had a, you know, like a club of good vampires, bad vampires, and they fought with each other and stuff like that, which gives me ideas. But I think that's enough rambling about that game pack. Unfortunately, this is a shorter video, so I don't have as much time to just rant about it. So we are working on Judith's room right now, and this is the last room. Uh, she's got a little desk nook area back in what I imagine could have been like a walk-in closet for the room, but she really wanted space for her computer, so she just used it as that instead of a closet. I also put some curtains up to give it a more private look, like it's more set apart from the rest of the room. And with the room, I was trying to go for a relaxing look with the blue on the wall and also the cherry blossom painting behind her bed. But we are almost at the end of the building part, so as usual, I just wanted to mention that if you want to download this, there's a link to do so in the description. And I also have stuff in there on how to find it in-game. But that's going to be all for me, so I hope you enjoy the rest of the video.